Bobby Jones pitching first bat of the game. Dave Roberts laying one down. Who needs a leadoff homer when you have a leadoff bunt? He's in there safe, but back at the mound. Whoops. Jones wiped out coming down. Trainer comes out. He's fine. Got to watch out. Bunts can wreak a lot of heavy. <laughs> and Brian Jordan in the seventh gets him off the back. Little ricochet job. He's safe. Jones, okay again. Could be a hockey play. Next batter, Mark James Grizzolonic. You get in this house right now. 6 4 3 double play. Bottom Jones seven. Lane, huh? Jones at the plate. Kazi Sheehy gives up a single to Jones. All's well for him. He Sheehy leaves down two zip after six and a third. Guillermo Mota takes his place out of the pen. Is it too late to get a Sheehy back? Who's Mota facing Julius Matos with a full count? Ball four. Next batter, Phil Nevin. 95 miles an hour turned around the other way will go a long way. Mota gives up a home run at Evan, his eighth. Padres lead at five nothing. The next batter, Ryan Klesko. Mota. Given the gun a workout, this one 97. Throws it fast, just the aim's a little off, and then to Ron Ganny, it's 101, and Gant just destroys it. His 10th of the year, Padres go up 7 off the Mota faced four batters and didn't retire any of them. Padres retired the Dodgers 8 0. LA's shutout, 11 time this season, ties the major league lead with the Royals and Devil Rays. Season, looking to avoid being swept out of town. Bottom of the first one out, rocks up 1 0. Sean Chacon. Walks Quentin McCracken. He was the hero Tuesday night. That was on four pitches. Next batter, Junior Spivey walks on five pitches. Next batter, Chacon throws ball one in the dirt to Luis Gonzalez. Ball two in the dirt. Next pitch, ball three in the dirt. And you get the idea. Next pitch, that's right. Walks Gonzalez on four pitches to load him up. Next batter, it's the splash man, Mark Grace. This would be too perfect if they put one in the pool now. So he does, and he grounds out to first. McCracken scores and tie the game at one. Bottom of the second, still tied at one. One out, two on Tony Womack. Fighting it off the fists, going the other way. Greg Norton can't get to it. Rod Barajas and Batista would score. Womack's got the great speed. He's got a triple. The Diamondbacks go up by a 3-1 score at that point. Go on to win 7-1. Todd Helton did snap a 24-game homerless streak. Colorado outscored 20 to 7 as they're swept by Arizona. Kirk Reader, top first, and will score two on. Full count to Jimmy Edmonds, and Edmonds grounds into the 4-6-3 double play. Tony Gwynn's got some batting titles for ESPN. Analysts going to tell us about the at bat. Reader's trying to get him to fish here on these three pitches, and now he's got to make a pitch and throws a good sinker and gets the double play ball. Sinker, sinker, sinker. Keep the ball down. Bottom four, still no score. Rich Aurelia, former driller off Andy Bennis. Aurelia's eighth homer of the year. One zip Giants. Tony Gwynn again, analyzing the batting strokes. He makes one mistake to Rich Aurelia, a fastball up in the zone. He hits it out of the ballpark, and from that point on, to me, it looked like Andy Bennis lost his rhythm. Andy Bennis in the bottom of the fifth with a runner on third. Two zip Giants. That's ball four to Aurelia. And Tony LaRusso sensing a lack of rhythm. It's Bennis after four and two thirds. And as he leaves the game, Eric Cooper says, Nice job, Blue. Way to go. You don't see that classy thing. Top six, Kirk Reader pitching to Fernando Vina. Good one is there. Filling in for Barry Bonds. Nice job out in the left field. Bottom six, bases loaded. Luther Hackman to Goodwin. Goodwin just one hit. Struck out three times, but that's all right. He saved one. He drove one in. Three nothing Giants. Bottom seven, four zip, bases loaded. Yorbit to Rilba, walks. Jeff Kent will score two walks and a hit for the San Francisco catcher. Giants win at 6-4. Reader's first win in nine starts, dating back to June 4th. Aurelia snaps a 14-game homeless drought. And they're showing the Reggie Jackson uniforms again out there at Edison Field in Anaheim. Top second, no score. David Justice batting and batting well, but Orlando Palmero leaps at the wall, makes a great catch into the wall, robs Justice of extra bases. Worth another look. Justice trots back. Palmero brought his glove. Stick that on the handlebar of your bike when you go to the park. Adam Kennedy leading off the third for Anaheim against Tim Hudson. Drops it down. Hustle. He's in there. Art Howe does not like the call. Show Art not liking call. There's Art not liking call. Take a closer look. And tie goes to the runner, but I'm not sure it was even a tie. Next batter, David Eckstein. 
drives a gapper to right center. That's down without question. Kennedy hustling. Going to try and score all the way from first. He will. Eckstein, 270 feet, slides in with a triple. Everybody's dirty. One zip angels. Next batter, Darren Erston. He's a punter. Whoops. It's by Greg Myers. Eckstein scores from third. Wild pitch charge to Hudson. It's 2-0 Angels. Top four still 2-0. Trying to get some offense. 12-game hitting streak from Miguel Tejada. Missed that nasty hook there from Aaron Seeley. Bases juice for Palmero. Entered the game hitting 400 off Hudson. And that one will get down. A bases clearing double. Garrett Anderson, Troy Gloss, Brad Fulmer. Everybody touching home plate. 5-0 Angels. Palmero 2 for 4. Top seven, Tejada batting again, and this time, 13-game hitting streak. Here it is. 22nd home run of the season into the Rocks. Cuts the lead to 5-1. to one. Look at the pitch location on this one. It appears to be fat, waist high in the wheelhouse. His 117th career homer. It's a new franchise record for Oakland shortstops. After a justice double, Eric Chavez. And there's Anderson. Over the shoulder grab. Angels win it 5-1. Good offense, just enough defense to get it done. And Anaheim moves into first place in the AL wild card race. Sealy gives him seven innings, seven, six hits, one earned run. Garrett Anderson, eight runs. Tejada is now homered in four straight games against the Angels. Hard luck for Tim Hudson again. Pitches well, but gets no help from his teammates. His run support has decreased in each season he has been with the A's. In fact, his team is scoring about half as many runs as they did for him in his first two years. Oakland's win percentage in Hudson starts is hovering around 500, down from 700 a couple years back. Both the A's and the Angels trail the Mariners. Seattle taking on a Texas team led by the gambler. Kenny Rogers took a gamble this week. He was dealt two cards, could stay in Texas. Or he could go to Cincinnati, only four back. Of course, the Rangers, 19 and a half back. But always be weary of the wild card. Mariners GM Pat Gillick had his eyes on Rodgers. Wednesday night, Rodgers face Seattle's ace, Freddie Garcia. Second pitch of the game, Frank Catalanato. God, Rangers up 1-0. Some run support for the gambler. Bottom of the second, the gambler dealing gets John Olerud. Rangers up 4-1 on the sixth. Edgar Martinez, the line drive, snagged by Rogers. But in the seventh, Dan Wilson, a drive up and out for Wilson, his first home run in 21 games. Cuts the lead to 4-3. Bottom eight, man on for Olerud. High chopper. A-Rod going to try and make the play and does. Olerud not exactly fleet of foot. Next batter with two outs, Ruben Sierra. And Rogers gets Sierra to fly out. The medium center to end the inning. Danny Colbon looking to save the game for the gambler. He gets Desi Relaford to ground out to end it. The gambler is a winner. Cole, congratulations. His first major league save. Rodgers is 2-0 with a 1.50 earned run average in four starts against the Mariners this season. And speaking of Seattle, they dropped down to 13 and 17 in one-run games this season. They were 26 and 12 in such games last season. It was Wednesday, Sean Estes gets the start and talks about the deuce. Over the top curveball, usually about six to 12 rotation. Uh, and I throw it like this on the top of the horseshoe, concentrating on keeping the pressure on this finger right here and on my thumb. In the lake. Kids, did you get that? Because Brad Wilkerson didn't. Drop the hammer on him. Have another tip from Sean Estes School of Pitching. Four seam fastball which is pretty much a straight fastball. I throw it across the seams. It's a ball a little straighter, a little easier to control. You usually get a little bit more velocity on it, too. Top third, Wilkerson gets a look at the four-seamer. Gets a good look at it, punches him out. Top five, no score. Wilkerson again, and quite frankly, he's been embarrassed in this highlight long enough. Crushes that one off Estes, who hangs the curve ball. Wilkerson's 12th homer, 2-0 Expos. Bottom five, still 2-0. A couple of runners in scoring position for Robbie Alomar, and he ropes one right to the big cat, Andres Galarraga. La Grosse. Look at Alomar. Hey, that's my job. Bottom seven, still 2-0. Runners on second and third, a couple out. Pinch hitter, John Valentin. Oh, a little bingo. Base knock, huh? Now, kid. One run will score. Vlad Guerrero comes up throwing Alomar at the plate. Hosed off. Check the replay, though. Alomar. Misses the plate. Michael Barrett tags him, but without the ball. 
Definitely not a top 10 moment, but eventually somebody's out here, and it's a Met. Bottom eight, still 2-1, bases chucked. Scott Stewart strikes out Ray Ordonez. Expos win it by a count of 2-1 to one to snap a five-game losing streak and a six-game road losing streak. Mets averaging only three and a half runs, and Sean Estes starts the season. He is winless since June 15th. Braves led the Marlins 3-0 in the first inning. Henry Blanco make it 6 nothing. his third homer of the year at 6 nothing Atlanta after half an inning. Bottom of the first. Here we go. Some defense by Chipper. Looks like a natural born left fielder on Eric Owens. We're used to seeing that from Andrew Jones, not Chipper. Bottom of the third. More of that great Braves defense. Luis Castillo, the liner, takes Damian Moss's glove off, and Moss recovers nicely. Moss had a great all-around game. Bottom of the fourth, Moss strikes out Owens, the backdoor curve. Moss didn't allow a hit until the fifth, the only hit he allowed in seven. And insiders know that Peter Gammon's nickname already is the commissioner. The fans are figuring it out as well. Braves are now 30 games over 500. they They're unbeaten in 22 straight series. Gary Sheffield has reached base in 50 straight games. That's the second longest such streak in the major this season. Ryan Klesko reached in 56 straight. Pirates Reds, bottom third. Pirates lead 4-3, but the bases are chucked for Todd Walker. Walker against Joe Bimel. Joe Bimel 0-3 on the road this season, about to go 0-4 after giving up the money ball. Grand slam for Walker, his sixth. Reds lead 7-4. Brian Moeller, right to work. Get him from Detroit one day, put him on the bump the next. Top four, 8-4 Reds. Keith Osick strikes out. Top five, love scoreboard camp. Kevin Young goes down looking. Moeller, five innings, four runs, nine hits, four strikeouts, 10-5 the final. Aaron Boone stole a career high three bases in this one. Just thought we'd add that. St. Louis loses to the Reds now three and a half games out of first. The NL Central Junior got the day off. Shot Johnny Yanks were holding their own personal hit parade. Wednesday night, cue the band. Love a good march. That was eight runs by Joe Torre's Yankees in the first two innings. We did it in 20 seconds. They still weren't done. Still in the second eight. Now the Nick Johnson with a couple of strikes just starts fouling them off, fighting away, going to stay alive. I will stand here until I win, he says. And on the 11th pitch, winner. Crushing the home run to ride his 13th of the year to make it 10 nothing. So the Yanks can cruise along. Let's go inside the numbers for the Yanks' first two innings. Five runs in each, total of nine hits, two walks, 11 base runners, 10 of them score. So you figure David Wells, two wins over Cleveland already this month, got it made. The Yankees have just about everything every year that you need to win a world championship. Great pitching, great offense, they get on base a lot. But one weak spot in their team may be their defense. From time to time, they're prone to make errors. And even though they've got great starters, the biggest thing about them, those errors can lead to big innings. Buck Martinez back with ESPN and speaking the truth. Joe Torre unhappy. Derek Jeter in error. Misplay by Robin Venturi. You saw Alfonso Soriano with an error. And then Ventura again. Can't handle this one. Eats him up. Yanks three errors in the inning. Lead to six Indian runs. So they got it to 10-6. But later in the game, a lot more offense. Jason Giambi. This is really, really high. Top of the foul pole. They estimated it at 900 feet. Yankees win it by a count of 14 to 7. Maybe not. Giambi, 4 for 5, 3 RBI. So what about Wednesday? Frank Castillo looking for his first win since June 12th. 0 and 4 in that span. Got off to a bit of a rocky start in the top of the second. Runners on first and second. Randy Wynn just blooped it to left for a double. Devil Rays had a 3 0 lead. Here's your next batter, Andy Sheets. Get out of town. You know he means it. It's his first home run of the season. The Devil Rays had a 6 0 lead. Here's the other buck. His fastball has been unable to let him get into counts where he can use all really four of his pitches fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. And I think uh, it's no big secret. Frank's command hasn't been where it needs to be. And, and uh, I just think that. You know, he's gotten into a little bit of a, a mental block here pitching in Fenway Park. Castillo was gone, and as we were in the top of the third, two out, the one-two pitch to Jared Sandberg. Casey Fossum and Doug Mirabelli thought they struck him out, but the umpire Joe West didn't think so. And on the next pitch, Sandberg takes advantage of what might have been an extra chance. 
get out. Ninth of the season. Devil Rays led 7 0. Red Sox mount a comeback. Bottom of the third, one out, first and second. Manny Ramirez doubles off the monster. That would score Trot Nixon. Sox cut the lead to 7 3. Top of the six. Nobody out runner on third. Call Crawford takes one over the Boston center fielder's head. That's Ricky Henderson in center field for Crawford. His first career triple. And the Devil Rays win 9 5. They win consecutive games for the first time since late June. Castillo lasts just one and two thirds, allows six earned runs on seven hits. Nomar has 14 RBIs in his last six games. Orioles one on Chris Carpenter. He's dealing to Howie Clark. It's a hit and run. Clark, great job to make contact. Gets his bat on the pitch out. Bloop single. Melvin Mora, though. Hey, Greedy, what are you doing? Going to third, he's thrown out. You know you should never make the first out. And then inning at third base. Great job, Clark able to get a piece. And watch Mora, it's a big part of his problem is that he stumbled around second base, easily thrown out by Vernon Wells. Bottom of the ninth, Blue Jays up five to two on two out. Cliff Poley blows the fastball by Melvin Mora and the Blue Jays win. How about the Brewers and the Astros? Ruben Cavedo on the mound for Milwaukee facing Lance Berkman, bottom of the third. Get out of town, and Berkman always means it, although not in the home run derby. His 31st of the year, Astros now trail 5-4. Brad Osmus has been hot lately. Since switching from a 31-ounce bat to a 33-ounce bat, Osmus gone 5 for his last 11. That's the last three games. He was just 7 for his previous 62 in July before switching bats, and the hits just keep on coming. Osmus was 1 for 2 in the game. Top of the seventh, Brewers up 8-7. Jose Hernandez. Base hit to right. Orlando Merced comes up throwing. There's going to be a play at the plate. Mark Loretta called safe. Osmus is livid. He'd be ejected immediately by the umpire, Matt Hollowell. I think we have to look at this again. He's not leaving. You've already been ejected. He's supposed to leave in a timely fashion. Osmus thinks he got the tag on Loretta. Hollowell How didn't think so. Osmus, as we told you, ejected. The Brewers up 9 7. Here's where it gets interesting, though. Mike DeJean is pitching. Greg Zahn, the shot to left. Matt Stairs, misplayed. Next batter, Jose Vizcaino. Base hit the center. Next hitter, Julio Lugo. Base hit loads him up. Craig Biggio, chopping a third. Greg Zahn would score on the play. The Astros down 12-8. The next batter, the always dangerous Berkman. Base hit to center, loads him up. Jerry Royce to the skipper has seen enough. Watch this. Here's from the here's something you don't see every day department. Jerry Royster comes out to pull Dijon, and the two exchange words and exchange words and exchange words. And this goes on and on and on. Dijon leaves after only getting one out. Later in the inning, the Astros down 12-8 and the base is loaded. Luis Vizcaino strikes out. Darrell Ward to end it, and the Brewers win 12-8. But afterwards, of course. The talk was about the get-together on the mound. DeJean apologized, saying, I was really, really displeased with coming out of the game at that point, but Jerry is the manager, and if he felt like I showed him up out there, then I apologize. By no means was it my intention to show him up. Boys and Cubs, Brett Myers making his major league debut. Flashback just three years ago, pitching as a senior in Englewood, Florida. A .8 ERA trying to get a prom date. Oh, but now, after... Each outing in the minors, he gives a call to Kurt Schilling. He's squaring off against Mark Pryor. He of the 11 starts. Peter Gammons on the kids. The thing that's so impressive about both Myers and Pryor is not only their stuff, and they both have great stuff, they're also very aggressive. I mean, Myers sometimes in the minor leagues was too aggressive. But what they do is they throw strikes. They command the strike zone, which is so important with young pitchers. It's all about makeup. Top first, Pryor gets Bobby Abreu for the Cubs. Bottom second, Myers. It's Todd Hundley with the fails. Top third bases are chucked two out. Pryor, Abreu, missed again. Swung right through the heat. Bottom third, Meyer. Mark Bellhorn got a hold of that one. Now gave up his first major league home run. Bellhorn's 14th of the season. One zip Cubs. Bellhorn doing fine work leading off for the Cubs. Bottom five after retiring the side in the fourth. Myers. Alex Gonzalez, nasty breaking ball. Top six runners on second and third. It's Pat Burrell, that's Pryor. Bottom six, Bill Miller grounds to Travis Lee. Meyer, he learns the fundamentals there in AAA in the minor leagues. Gets over, covers the bag. Bottom seven, Scott Rowland robs Moises Alou. Meyer, he is impressed with Big League D. That was unbelievable. I've never seen, I've never had a play made, made behind me like that. 
He called it a web gem. Love that guy. Mars retired 14 straight after the home run by Bellhorn. Eight innings pitch, two hits, one earned, five Ks, and Dad called everybody to tell him about it. In the ninth, Jose Mesa giving up the jack to Sammy Sosa, his 31st, for just his fourth hit in the last 24 ABs. Four two fills, two on, two out. Corey Patterson done. 31st save for Jose. Bills win it by a count of 4 2. Myers' his first career major league win. He's only the fifth pitcher in the last 30 years to pitch eight innings and allow two hits or fewer in his major league debut. Bottom of the first score is Magli Ordonez with two on, one out against Kyle Loesch. Ordonez lines with a left. Jacques Jones coming on. Not only the diving catch, but he doubles up Ray Durham off second. One man left on for Chicago. This is the split, split screen. Bottom of the second, you saw the bases were loaded for Mark Johnson, and Loesch blows Johnson away. Next batter, Kenny Lofton with the bases still loaded. And Loesch gets Lofton to uh, pop out. Loesch escapes the jam. Three more left on for the Sox. A developing trend. Bottom of the third, two on for Frank Thomas. Grounds the third, Corey Koski will step on the bag. Two more left on by the Sox. Two on for David Ortiz in the top of the fifth. Crushes one, three run Jack, his 12. It's six, nothing. Twins, nothing many about them. Bottom of the fifth, two on for Paul Conurco. One for his last 13. Conurco grounds out the short. White Sox still struggling to score runs. Bottom eight, two on for Royce Clayton. Grounds to first. That's where Doug Mankiewicz hangs out. Throws to Chris John Guzman for the force. No strands, two more. Twins win easily, eight to one for Chicago. That's 12 LOB left on base. Loesch has allowed just three earned runs in his last four starts overall. Twins have won seven of their last eight. They're 11 and three since the break, and the Sox have allowed 33 runs in their last four games. Byrd told the Kansas City Star he plans to propose a multi-year deal to the club and at considerably less than his presumed value will be on the free agent market next winter. He actually said he'd take a third off his market value to stay in Kansas City. If every ball player did that, we wouldn't be talking about a strike. We'd be talking about what a great bunch of guys they are. Bird at 13 and 6, chance to become Casey's first 20-game winner since Brett Saberhagen in 89 and twirling against the Tigers. So he does have a fan club. So just add one more member. Top of the first, Jose Lima to Aaron Guile. One out, one minute into the game. Randall Simon up in the bottom of the second, 15 and a half minutes in. Simon's 12th home run, that off bird. one nothing Tigers. You know, 19 years ago today, George Brett, Rich Gossage, Brett hit what appeared to be a two-run home run. But the whole plate umpire, Tim McClellan, ruled him out for too much pine tar. Probably one of the greatest things that ever happened in my career because prior to that day, everywhere I went, I was the hemorrhoid guy on visiting on deck circles. <laughs> and all I did was just get ragged and ragged and ragged about the hemorrhoids I had in the 80 World Series. But ever since July 24th, 1983, now I'm the pine tar guy. You know, all hell broke loose. That's the maddest human being I've ever seen in my life. Brett and Gossage on Dan Patrick's radio show. Top of the ninth, three nothing Tigers. Juan Acevedo facing Luis Alice with a man on. Four, six, three double play. The final three nothing Tigers in an hour and 41 minutes. That's what we're talking about. A manageable one hour, 41 minutes. It's the shortest big league game since 84.